Sewers. Greg Sewers to hit. Oh. Two seconds left. Kyle Spindle. Memorial stuffs the last player for Dynasty. Slams home that buzzer. The 2016 Millennium Series World Championships going down here in Chantilly, Paris. I'm Andy Marshall alongside Nick Sloviak. Uh, this ga game is brought to you by Paintball Beckering. Thank you so much for your support. Please support the people that support us here. And right now, it's about to go down D2 final matchup. It is Upton 187 crew, a team that you are, I think, a little familiar with here, Nick. Are they new? Are they new to the league this I year? I think they're new to the league this year. Uh, we'll see. You know, they made it all the way to the final match. Uh, yeah, so Upton 187 crew coming over here from the States, playing the NXL, and they got a chance to come over uh, to play this event. They were like, hey, let's do it. It's kind of a skeleton crew, though. Yes. Um, Coach Noel Tran is playing with them, as well as the owner, uh, Dave Painter. Uh, also, Eddie Painter is, um, he has, his knee is flaring back up again. So yeah. it's going to, he actually can't walk. So when they, when they switch sides, I was just talking to Dave right now. He can't actually walk that amount of space in 30 seconds, so they may use a timeout occasionally to get him to his spot. Yeah, he told me that, and I had a few choice words for him. I was like, man, you're playing in the finals. You're a pro team playing a Division II team. You need to <laughs> – hey, man. Still, you mean, come on. Come on, Eddie. You can do come it. Come on now. So they're taking on Ultra Moscow, <clears throat> and that should be a pretty good matchup. Again, you know, a pared down roster for Upton 187 crew, but they've been playing really well out here. They have, and an uh, interesting story is these two teams played in the prelims. They did. They did. Who won? Ultra Moscow. Okay, well, four there you go. 4-0. 4-0. 4-0. Zero. Four zero. Wow, they whooped them up. Yeah, they did. And there's Ultra Moscow right there on your screen. we got Russia on the left. I don't know that says Wally. Molly. So Ultra Moscow, though, the number one team in this in Division 2, open to D2. So yeah. they're a great team. Ultra Moscow's been well uh, doing well. We've seen Kulagin out there. Uh, do really well for his squad. So Ultra Moscow on your screen, and there is the crew from the States, Upton 187. And it looks like a rather conservative breakout for them, but they did take a, uh, got a body out wide on the D side of the field. Well, it's all Ultra Moscow right now on the breakout, as they're already up at the wall. Drito won, the Snake won. Oh, oh first, first body breath. though to drop. First kill goes to 187. Just four players left alive right now for Ultra Moscow. They do have a body. In Snake 1 as well as D1 over here, D side of the field, and now they're going to reposition, get up in that center. But a body looks like Pike gets shot on that D side. Moses still alive over there in the center, and he's going to try to wheel and deal to get up into that center 50, and he gets the kill, but trades out with them. So, and another body had dropped too, so just two players left alive right now for 187. So yeah. if they lose this point, this is going to be five unanswered points in the two games that these, game, these teams have played against each other that Ultra Moscow was put up on 187. Yeah, I really like the move by Ultra Moscow to go back up to the wall, that player right away. Within the first like five seconds, made that secondary move up to the wall after their first player died. You can see the spread there for up to 187 crew. That's Match Rula in the mini wall, shooting towards the Dorito side, and he's got Eddie Painter alive in that can, shooting cross field on the snake. Ultra Moscow right there, player there up at the wall. Second player in the snake, three, two, actually two players in the wall. So there's a player on the snake side and the side of that wall bunker right there. You can see one of them. Player wrapping the snake three. There you have all three players across the 50s. So in good field position here, the three bodies for Ultra Moscow. But they don't have anyone wide on that D side. And you can see just two players left alive right now for Upton 187 crew. Uh, stand up over here on the D side of the field, as well as the insert wall bunker snake side. They are crossed up. You see this player, he's shooting towards the D side. This player over here is shooting towards the snake side. That is that traditional cross up that you do when you have just two players left alive. You're looking in front of each other. Yeah, and a good move now by the Ultra Moscow player to back up out of the snake side of the wall and retreat all the way to the Drito 2. It's going to spread the field and make it a lot harder for Matt Ruler now to contain the wall should they decide to launch. And he's going to go ahead and launch. Eddie Painter hobbles and he gets shot trying to get out wide. Kind of a desperation move. Well, that's Noel Tran, actually. That's not Matt Ruler. I'm sorry. <laughs> So Noel Tran going to take a couple up the back. 
Is Ultra Moscow going to go ahead and take this first point with three bodies alive? Yeah. Come on, guys. Well, that knee has got to be bothering Eddie. I mean, he looked like a, a, a hamstrung horse over there galloping out to that back corner bunker. So he's definitely having problems with that knee. And again, that's, they started on their close side by their pits. When the team switched side, they only have six bodies. So look for his, uh, look for his dad, the owner of the team, Dave Painter, to come in potentially and play a point for him. Dave still getting reps. He's 54. I just asked him how old he was, and I think he's 54. How rude. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Looking at Bad Boys OSS2. Taking Bad on RMG Symphony, Bratislava. Yeah, RMG Symphony has literally had a flawless year. They've been in the finals three times, and they've won three events. They're three for three. They will be moving up next year, regardless of what happens here. I asked them that in the pits. And uh, yeah, they've just been the definition of dominant this season. Looks like two bodies dropping early for Bad Boys. The Bad Boys team from the Netherlands have been together for about eight years. They all started together when they were 12, 13. So now all in their late teens and early 20s. Safe for Bart Blonsky. Oh yeah, but Bart, Bart's like Ryan, you know? He just keeps getting older, but keeps looking the same age. Yeah, <laughs> you're right, it's so true. <laughs> yeah, Bart looks exactly the same as I met him when he was like, like 18 years old. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Bart Blonsky, legendary paintball player, played for uh, the Russian Legion for many years, won some world titles with them, and he's been kind of, you know, the, he was the imported star. But you, know, you, you don't have the success, you don't win three tournaments if you don't have the depth. And definitely Bratislava with a pretty deep team now. So there is Karsliv, number 92, gets in the snake, Pasha. And he plays, who does he play for? Pasha plays for the Russians, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know. I want to say he's played for the Russian Legion. Or I, maybe we've he, definitely called that name before. Maybe he was on Art Chaos. But I've, Pasha, it eludes me because they played, it looks as Pasha gets up there and he shoots the ball player for oh, yeah. OSS. Pasha's just feasting right now over um, here. Snake side. Bodies coming off everywhere for bad boys. Not looking good for them. And they're just going to clear the field out. So nice job of the combo of Pasha coming up here along with Bart right behind him here, Snake's side of the field. Yeah, we didn't get to see the this divisional game in London. We did see it in Germany, and in Germany it was uh, one of the Bratislava players lost to Loader. Remember, and he, he kicked it forward and they had to come and get it for him? Oh yeah, that was a good one. Some bad boys right there getting clean off of the pit. They do lose that first point to Bratislava. 10 seconds from the start of this next point. Ultra Moscow against 187. Pro team out of the U.S. They shouldn't be losing. Look at Eddie Painter there. Gonna be shooting snake side on the break. Does he get that kill? I don't think so. So five bodies alive for both teams. Moses, Avon Barksdale, headed up to the Dorito side of the wall right away. Gonna try and put pressure on the D side. You can see the Ultra Moscow player there on your screen. Gonna head up. And he might come around, looks like Molly might come around. Mally might come around and get a shot on Moses. Moses there posted towards the D side of the field. Still five bodies alive for both teams. The bulk of the strength for Ultra Moscow here towards the snake side. You can see they just sent one body towards that D side, but he has a pretty taken some good ground. He's in D2. Molly up in the center. And there goes the moves over here. Looks like Darula getting into the snake right now for Upton 187. Oh, Darula got shot. That's Noel Tran. Yeah, that is Noel Tran. And so, yeah, Darula did get shot. So, Noel Tran now taking some ground over here. But looks like Donovan gets shot out of that center. Yeah. Body's dropping again for Upton. And I think Molly stayed alive. I don't see a player for Ultra Moscow walking off. Noel Tran's going to take one in the shoulder. Not paying attention to the center. So three bodies down, four 187 crew. Yeah, it looks like Pike's still alive there in the left-hand portion of your screen. Yeah, Pike and um, Eddie Painter. And so again, Pike. with Painter really limited mobility right now, going to have to rely on his gun skills, which are considerably good. Yeah, as Pike fills back to the back center, no one on the Dorito side for 187 crew. As Ultra Moscow is now pushing into the 50s. See the player there in the left side of the wall posted up on Josh Pike. Looks like they are going to concede the point with the massive body advantage for Ultra Moscow. That gives them an, another point. So there's Donovan. There's the coach, actually, of the team, Noel Tran. 
But again, with the pared down roster, and there is one of their stars, Darula, kind of getting shut him. down so far here in this in this the first couple points. I mean, I can't see him. I just missed him. Yeah, Matt Darula unable to make the last NXL event. Stood up at a wedding for a friend. I didn't know he was in the act. Nobody told me that. <laughs> yeah, so a little bit of miscommun miscommunication. No excuse for that. Yeah. Hold them to a high standard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you do uh, all the smack talk on 187 here as you are a teammate of theirs in the States. I know you expect excellence out of your team. So, Bratislava losing a body. One body dropping as well for bad, bad boys as they make a secondary bump up there to the wall. Losing a second body now out of that back center. <clears throat> a lot of bodies we've seen dropping, like you were saying uh, earlier, uh, the number two is a carnage, right? Losing those secondary bodies, those mm -hmm. back bodies, and something you can't really have happen here. You don't want to be the first person dead walking off from the back center. It's Bratislava now loses a second body. So three on three. It's Bratislava there on your screen. Playing out of that snake tower, looking cross field. Oh, OSS lose their body out of the wall. And then at the same time, Bratislava lose a body. Ref running in. This could be a one for one. Well, here comes Pasha again, making a big fill all the way down. A kill comes off that side. Pasha comes out wide to get a drop on the player for the bad boys in the snake. That's a good move. Came out wide and traded that body out, but that leaves, I think, just one body alive. You only need one. Yeah, and they should be conceding this point to save time. So thought for a second that this point wasn't going to go RMG's way, but I thought maybe a moment of weakness for the team that has just pitched it perfect so far through three events, three finals finishes, three victories, trying to make it four in a row. I talked to their coach actually in the pit and he was like shaking. I said, hey, you gonna make it four in a row? And he's like, not even thinking about that, man. Taking, you know, typical answer, one point at a time. It's not even about that, but, and that's the good answer. That is obviously the way you want to look at it. And there is Bart Blonsky. Looks like they're gonna be running the same play. Five minutes and 46 seconds left. Up to 187 crew needs to get some sort of offense rolling. They just haven't been able to get things going on the D side or the snake side. One for one, gonna be assessed here in Ultra Moscow as the player headed to the corner. Looks like they took one in the pack, so that's gonna be a nice... Oh, another one for one Ooh, happening. Little gift for Upton right now, trying to put their first point on the board here against Ultra, not only in this match, but in the match that they played in the prelims. Yeah, and they do lose a body, and look at this, Ultra Moscow heading up the center, Moses gonna run through. So, Ultra Moscow giving 187 crew a gift in the form of two minor penalties. Donovan there, former U.S. Marine, Devil Dog, hitting that buzzer. So, Upton crew getting a point on the board, not going quietly into the night. Raging against the dying of the light. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so, coming back out to play the next point with a early 2-0 lead. RMG, Bratislava, Symphony on your now, screen. Will they be moving up to SPL? Because well, they're in Division One, right? They're not an SPL team. No, they're not. So, they're in D1. So, yes, they would move up to SPL. Okay. And they should because no. they've just been curb stomping people <laughs> all year long. And do we have any of the results of the SPL? Uh, we do not yet. Still, okay, still do not know who is going to be playing in the SPL final match. It was uh, most of the favorite teams that made it in there. We're probably going to see the Russians. I wouldn't be surprised as they've been having a great year. Bratislava was 7-10 on the clock. Looks like they killed the first body. And starting to make moves towards the snake. Not much penetration on the D side yet. You can see the five bodies for them. And there's yeah. Danny Rams and Snake One for the bad boys. Yeah, nice little move up to the center. Now Bratislava gets in the Snake One, shoots cross field immediately, trying to get a shot. Bad boys making the move into Snake Three, countered. At the same time by Bratislava. Bratislava losing their Dorito player. So four on four. See Danny 
shooting crossfield. He just lost another teammate, so three players left alive. Four bad boys, here comes a move. Yeah, it's Blonsky. Ooh, asking for a check on his back as his back gets decimated. That guy has to throw his body away. That was Rams come through to trade out with Blonsky. Nice. But Bratislava right there to fill up, right behind him after yeah. that death. One body remaining. <clears throat> Gonna get checked out and called out. No, oh, no, still clean. In that three to one. Bratislava is just so confident on the attack. Their timing is really good. Unca uncharacteristically fast moves and good communication and timing from what is what we've seen out of uh, RMG Symphony here this year. You know, and that's that's all. The timing is the difference. Um, obviously, every level you go up, hey, job, guys are going to be a little bit better at everything. But what really makes the difference is how quickly you can close gaps, how quickly you, you if an advantage, okay. if some sort of window pops up, do you take advantage of that window? And that's what they're really good at. Yeah, I mean, looking like a very well-oiled machine. And uh, proven that all year long, because they have dominated this division. That's Upton Crew on your screen. Looks like they got a little bit of a late start there. Trying to go off that horn, but all five bodies alive for both teams. Matt Derulo there on your screen. That's Moses in, oh, that's Eddie. Jeez, Eddie is still hobbling all over the place, man. Really yeah, I'll give it to him, though. On. Yeah, gutsy performance here from Eddie Painter. I mean, he was the last guy left alive in, that, in the last point. There's a spread for Ultra Moscow. They do get a body out wide to that Dorito corner. Dorito can back center, Snake can and Snake Tower. It's a little bit more of a pocket play, not making any secondary moves that they have. In the first three points, they're really quick to move up the field and take positions. Players are reloading. Coach Noel Tran of 187 in that snake one. <laughs> Turned out to be a nice day here. Sun's now out. Yeah, sun Great finally coming out, getting a little windy, a little breezy. I don't exactly call it windy yet, but still definitely a nice paintball day. Four minutes and eight seconds left to go. Kind of a stalemate point right now here. Five on five still after a decent amount of play here in yeah. this point. Matt Jarula has to work his way out to that corner from that can as you're looking at Ultra Moscow and really try and help Noel Tran get down that snake. And it's now players from both or all over the place for Ultra Moscow making moves, doubling up that tower and just walking right into Snake One, now up to the center tower. So there you go, Noel Tran making his way into Snake Two, and he can continue to crawl right now. Get himself into snake three. Darula gets out to the corner. There's no trend. If he looks inside, he might be able to do have a little gunfight there with that tower who's playing out pretty wide, shooting left hand, shooting right hand and left side of the bunker. Exposing a lot of himself. Yeah, he's worried about just keeping that lane. Trying to load his load the pot up. Does. Time really starting to become a factor here in this really long point. Neither team dropping a body yet. It's kind of rare on this particular layout. Yeah. I mean, this is starting to look like a heat impact game as Pike yeah, moves up to the Dorito 3. Makes it alive. Well, I'm, I'm hearing a cheer from the I crowd, which normally the, means, oh, okay. SPL game's going on in the field next to us. there's an American team playing a European team, normally a cheer <laughs> from the crowd means somebody died on the American <laughs> Absolutely. <side. laughs> We're not doing well. But there's a five bodies for Ultra, Snake 3, Center Tower, Snake Tower, Dorito 1, and the Dorito Corner. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in regulation. The 187 crew gonna have to get something going here. Is the player now, oh, one player now drops for Ultra Moscow as the player moves up into the 50 Dorito. Wow, so first body to drop, and this is exactly what Upton wanted to happen here because they now have a one body advantage. The Drool and Snake. That uh, is Noel Tran. Noel is the Tran, move is gonna Noel come Tran down. One. Well, here comes a big move, Ultra Moscow trying to break it open there. D side of the field, they're able to shoot Pike. So, and I don't think any other bodies, though, have come off. It looks like Eddie Painter tosses a pot over to uh, to Darula. And then here comes Noel Tran, makes the move. Does he clean him out? And he doesn't. No, so able to stay alive. That was huge for Ultra Moscow. If Noel was able to get that shot, that definitely would have been a big advantage to Upton 187 crew, possibly allowing them to tie this game up. Now, 
Derula gonna be forced to try to gunfight that guy out of that spot. You can see he's tucked in right now. Head checks towards the D side. Yeah, the problem for Derula right now is the Dorito 3 shooting crossfield at him. Yep. Um, and he's got the 50 Dorito, yeah, the snake Dorito down on him as well, yeah, so. You can see right there, that guy giving Derula a little bit of an issue. Oh, did he get him? Oh, Moses just got shot out of the Dorito corner, so now it's a four on two. No, but the Ultra Moscow player just got, I think Derula just shot, got that shot down the line. So Eddie Painter is able to fill back with his bad knee, still able to make it to the back spot, and he's gonna gimp up to the next spot too. So, gutsy performance again by Eddie Painter playing on the bad knee. Must win point right now, oh, down by one, under a minute to go. Darula knows it, he moves up, he knows what's going on with the clock. Yeah. Uh, trying to call his kill. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't know that there's a player on the other side of him. But Eddie, Eddie Painter, Eddie, well Eddie's gonna close the gap, the referee is running over to check out Darula. If he's got a hit, look for a penalty, but Darula is gonna Jedi mind trick the ref right there. <laughs> look at Eddie skip in, <laughs> Eddie is skipping in. No, nah, well Darula wasn't hit, but it looked like the ref was trying to run in there. He, he definitely got bounced, I'll tell you that. The Ultra Moscow player was in their Dorito 3 and put a shot on Drula across field. Luckily for him, it bounced. Ooh, but what, hey, <coughs> what a gutsy performance by Eddie Painter here on oh, his absolutely. bum knee, able to somehow get in there and hit that buzzer with just 30 seconds to go, putting the tying point on the board. Also, definitely hats off to Matt Derula, who was able to maintain his composure on in that back bunker and I'm pretty sure Drula got himself two kills out of there but yeah Eddie Painter and Drula combining to save the day here for so far at least uh, for Upton 187 it's still tied right now but if they lose that that's it game over and they're playing for the win right now so you're shaking your head I was like right away I was like fuck yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. might be time to give uh, Dave good old Dave Painter there a spin I don't know, gone. man. Eddie, Eddie, hey, you told I, I'm not me. saying hey, take you, Eddie out. You I'm saying put me. David oh, okay. in him. Okay, I didn't say take Eddie out. Hey, Eddie is out there playing, again, on a, a knee that's not, obviously not working very well. Got a flat tire out there. And back in this match here, RMG Symphony, Bratislava, just continuing their master performance in 2016. And they are one point away from a mercy rule killing here of the bad boys who fought hard to get here, but they are facing a team that has been undefeated in, in these final matches throughout this season. Yeah, as you watch the secondary moves there of RMG Symphony. Not too much of an aggressive point there. They stack two bodies in the back center off the break. And you can see Bad Boys there on your screen. A little bit of a penetration up to the center, that center tower. Waiting for that player to make the move up to the wall. There it goes. I look to the window, check off in the back center. Just misses the player moving out to the Drito 1. I'm sure if the Bad Boys player saw that. Sounds like RMG Symphony though has picked up that move and identified the player up there. So we'll see if anyone launches to go take out that wall player. Well, there still is a lot of time in this game. And the first body to drop comes from the Bad Boys. Uh, yep, so yeah. RMG lose. Oh, they did lose their back corner bunker snake side. So four on four. RMG on your screen. Looking to use the clock to their advantage. They do lose a second body though, so only three players left alive. RMG down by one. Oh, body. Right. Running ref coming over to check out one of the players for RMG. He's good. Good to go. Still alive. And now it looks like the bad boys. Uh, they are pushing. They know they need to score some points here. Trying to get past this 50-yard line, but get taken out. We lose one body. Another two bodies come off for RMG. Ooh, with Symphony throwing bodies away there on that Dorito side. And the Snake 50, so I think there's only one player left alive. He runs to his death. Just look at this, RMG, the veterans. I think one player left alive right there on your screen. I'm not seeing any Bad Boys players at all. So that's two points in a row. Close game, chaos towards the end. Yeah, it was a close point. But but RMG Symphony gonna hold on to take the win. <laughs> I thought, man, a ref walked out of his behind a bunker and he spun his gun. I thought he was taking the ref out. <laughs> so you see the RMG Symphony player checking off every possible spot. Smart. There's no one in front of him, but just being careful. Yeah, I think these two refs kind of give it away. If I see two refs kind of waiting for me at the, <laughs> at the flag station, like, hey, what are you guys doing over here? 
Booyah. So Lupo hits that buzzer to put the final point on the board for RMG Symphony Bratislava, and they will take yet another victory here in a complete and utter domination of this division in 2016. That's pretty much been the only story down in D2 this year has been how, I'm sorry, D, D1 is, is how well that they've been playing. So they're celebrating right now as well they should, and they will be heading up at division for 2017. Jubilation. Yes, that's what uh, that's what victory looks like, everybody. So now here, back in this match, it is all tied up at two. We'll see who's going to win this D2 matchup here and take the victory at this Millennium Series World Championships. Rula. Getting checked out by the ref. He is at the pin here in the center. Goes past the 50-yard line. There are a ton of bodies coming off for Ultra Moscow. And there are still a couple bodies left for 187. So pretty much a bloodbath point. And with just nine seconds left to go, Donovan hits that buzzer. And it looks like Upton 187 crew might be taking the victory here. Should be, there should be a smile on your face. Right I, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, there is now. That is good. Yeah, so nice job by Donovan. And it looked like Pike was still alive. Yep, it was Pike. And then Eddie Painter. He's just, definitely still alive. Yeah, he hobbles Eddie off Painter and pumps his fist. Eddie is hobbling off, pumping his fist in the air. And with a bum knee, he still played every single point out there. Somebody get that man a crutch right now and a beer because he deserves it. No, no, let him go in for me. I'm injured. Well, I mean, we're still going to play. <laughs> now, he's finally, <laughs> now he's like, get me out of here. Yeah, he's like, that's it. I'm Dad, injured. tag team, you're in, baby. I did what I needed to do. I played all the points. Yeah, look at my knee hurts. Somebody get somebody get me an Advil, please. Take some ice. Hey, get dressed. We have a minute. A minute twenty far side. We're on far side. Yeah, I mean they just need to be careful not to get a penalty right now. It's pretty much the only thing that could uh, that could quell this victory would be some sort of major penalty. Guys. Oh, we're out there. there is Matt Derula. Yeah, the other game's done, so they're going to have to get out here and play this next nine seconds. It's always a nail biter of a nine seconds, man. Just like, oh, please, nobody get a penalty. So it looks like Noel Tran coming you know, out. To be honest with you, like in the situations I've, I've been in with those, it's just hit the people you know are coming, right? In the past, it used to be just send, have one person sit on the flag, mm -hmm. right? Don't let someone grab the flag. But now, you know, you know they're going to go to the wall. You know they have to go wide to the snake, and there's probably going to be a runner on the Dorito side. Just get to your spots, right, and shoot your guns. That's it. Just put paint on the other guys. Hey, you got eight seconds. Never stop shooting your gun. Through the lanes. They, they Everywhere. Have, they have to come around each side of the, w, each side of the wall. They're definitely going to be streaking out wide. Probably a guy running in the snake. I mean, there's only certain lanes they can run through. And I don't so even know if... That. Yeah, 20 seconds. Well, yeah, I didn't see anybody. Oh, timeout now called by Ultra. Ultra Moscow's not even out here yet. So, yeah, so they're calling timeout. So, they, so let's listen in here. Oh, run to the two looking side, snake side. Yes, sir. I'm going to go out to the four and play my outside and get to the corner. Noel's going to go up and out to the guy and look inside. I'm going to go to the corner. Run and go to the corner and run down the fucking field. Yeah. No penalties. Guys, come on, bring it in here. No hey. penalties. Hey, we're so fucking close. Come on. Eight yeah, so close. Eight no eight penalties. Darula just uh, playing the sergeant right now, giving everybody their orders. Okay, you got damage control. Yeah. All right, boys. All right. They're running. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. They are eight seconds away from taking this victory as long as nobody gets a penalty. I'm going out there, I'm taking any spot. <laughs> Dave, you're out. I'm coming in. <laughs> we discussed that earlier. <laughs> so 20 seconds to go before the start. Of this shot, next and final point should be the final point. Again, unless some sort of crazy penalty happens. That is Dave Painter is crazy. I'll try, you try and just run to their flag station and hit the buzzer. I don't know. Hey, gut punch is all from everybody if you get a penalty on this one. Uh, so here we go. All Upton needs to do is just, here comes Ultra Moscow, full court press for them. They double the wall. They send three bodies streaking down the D side of the field, but bodies are getting chopped up. They do not have enough time. And that is going to do it. You saw as soon as that horn hit, <laughs> Tarula <laughs> looked at but, one but of the players. Do you see the, per the, the Ultra Moscow player there in the white goggles and the red beanie walking off? Mm -hmm. If that's Mali, wasn't hit and was literally 
steps away. Steps away from hitting the buzzer. Well, eight seconds is right around. That's the and they, and that well, that's person, the physical that limit ran, of being able to run the lane. And that player field. ran around the Doritos. Well, somebody somebody didn't do their job. There. Yeah. Jeez, oh man. Yeah, I was it, holding my breath. Yeah, but Darula looked at him and gave him the throat chop signal. Well, he Darula, looked at the guy that almost hit the buzzer and was as the buzzer hit, and as soon as he looked in the rest, that's called the kid clean, coming out. He gave he gave him the throat chop. Yeah. Yeah, so big congratulations to RMG Symphony as they take the D1 final matchup and had pretty much a perfect season. They will be moving up a division and also up to 187 crew making the journey across the pond to play their first Millennium Series event. And uh, again, if you're asking if you're one of the American uh, fans watching over there, it's like, why is up to 187 crew playing in Division Two? Well, they weren't allowed, you're not allowed to play in the CPL or the SPL because those are locked divisions. So they had a great time over here in France, and they are taking home the first place trophy. And there is the owner of the team, Dave Painter. He should be very proud, especially of his son's performance there, Eddie Painter, playing on that bum knee, and he played great. So stick with us here. We're going to be back. Consolation match, third and fourth place in the CPL. And then we're going to see the final in the SPL and the game we're waiting for, Edmonton Impact, Toulouse Tauntauns, playing for the win here and the series title. It's all for grabs. We'll be back here at GoSports.com. Again, this game brought to you by Paintball Veckering. See you in just a few.